Hey, God bless you, my friend. This is Sister Sharon. And first, let me tell you, my friends, after I had posted the video that I would no longer um, bring content here on Motivating You to Win, I began to receive quite a few emails that really made me ponder before the Lord that there needs to be some more things that we discuss here on this particular channel. So I will begin to post again once a week, once a, every two weeks. It will not be, uh, you know, every day as I used to. I will be doing that on the new channel. Never give up, never quit. That's my new YouTube channel where I will be posting every day, especially once I come through my full healing. Uh, many of you know that I've had major surgery at the end of March. I feel amazing. I thank God. I thank my doctor. I thank my nurses and my sons. I feel amazing and everyone that is connected to the charity and the ministry that has helped. I thank God. I feel good, friends. Um, I also want to thank everyone that who, I mean, you all Many of you stepped up and said, hey, you wanted to help with the crusade, um, the crusade of hope, which is never give up, never quit crusade will begin June 24th. I will crusade through four states and then I'm going to double back and crusade through Michigan. So, friends, I want to thank you. I want to solicit your prayers. Um, it's time to do a lot of fundraising. I have to knock on a lot of doors to raise this money for us to move through the these states giving random acts of kindness and of course preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ now friends I want you to be encouraged if you have received a prophecy and you are getting frustrated your faith is growing weak you're not sure um, you know if if what you received was real friends I want to encourage you that there there is things that God is dealing with us and dealing with you, my, my friend, to bring you into maturation and maturity. So, number one thing I want you to look at, if you are not yielding in the area of forgiveness, unforgiveness can destroy you. And we will all be tested in this area of forgiving people who have harmed you, offended you, especially the brethren. We are sometimes going to get on each other's nerves. We're going to disappoint one another. But friends, you have to make sure you're checking your heart to, to know that you are not carrying the poison of unforgiveness because God doesn't want to bring you into that season and you have this in your heart. Number two, if you are the type of person that will not finish projects, things that you believe God told you to do, but you don't finish, friends, you got to have the spirit of the finisher. Number three, if you, my friend, will not move away from disobedience. I went through a season, friends, where I was disobedient to God and I took a whooping. And and listen, let's 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 keep it real, friends. Sometimes we are not aware that our behavior or our alliance. See, some people's problem, you're not necessarily sinning, but you still have relationships that God say, I'm not pleased with that. And you got to remember this. When you are in certain relationships, if it's pulling you into carnality, you got to cut, cut, snip, snip. Because to bring the thing to pass, you want to make sure that you do not compromise the gospel of Jesus. Or if you have a ministry gift that you are not compromising that gift but you are growing in your gift. And the and number 4 or number 5 is character. Are you growing up? Friend, look at your life. Are you still responding to re, uh situations and relationships the same way you did 5 years ago or when you got the prophecy? Are you still the 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 person that that will not forgive? I can't say that enough, my friend. 
What is your character? How do you spend your money? Are you faithful about your money? So you got to remember, if God has called you into ministry in particular, there are certain things that, friends, you have to be broken from it. I recall certain things about my character when it came to spending. That thing died. You have to understand, friends, in, in the case with motivating you to win, never give up, never quit the charity, which also is handmade souls for hope. We give random acts of kindness. So it's no longer about spending money on me. It's about spending money on other people, strangers to make their hearts smile. So there are some disciplines that I still practice when I was in my wilderness waiting for God to bring the prophecy to pass. I still practice those disciplines. I have a small closet. I don't like excess in my life because friends it's wasteful and it is resources that could be used for the mission which is hope using tangible things to do random acts of kindness my friend so therefore god allowed me go to go through a wilderness well that where that was wrought in me it was it was it was just it, it was like rubbed into my soul friends not to waste not to be excessive amen so there are things you got to look at that number five or number six. You want to make sh sure, friends, that you now this one is very practical, but you got to catch it. Are you disciplined about taking care of yourself? Are you balanced? Are you getting good sleep? Are you eating well? Are you overeating? Are you overweight? Are you unhealthy? Are you feeling unhealthy? Are you practicing, friends, discipline? Making your flesh obey. Are you still dibbling, dibbling and dabbling in and fleshly um, um, passions, friends? Because let's face it, I you know I used to really like Mr. Good Bar's can uh, Mr. Good Bar candy bar, but I soon found out that eating too many of those friends, them you know they ain't my friend. So I had to discipline my flesh. Same way with vanilla ice cream, my friend. Vanilla ice cream is not your friend. I discovered it. It's not my friend. So these are disciplines where he's he's helping you to, to build character. Where you don't have to be disciplined by mortals. Because the spirit in you welcomes discipline. And you will discipline your flesh. You will put it down. Oh, yes, my friend. And number six, the tongue. Are you still using it to slander, to gossip? See, friends, this is why I do not talk on the telephone. I don't like talking on the telephone. I can meet you for the first time. I can call you about business. But, friends, I try to stay away from it because it is a segue to gossip and idle conversation. So, so friends, we want to make sure that we're looking at these areas. Are you taking care? I hear the, oh, I hear the Lord saying to go back here. Are you taking care of yourself? I'm talking food now. It's important that if there is obesity in your life, if you have extreme weight issues, friend, you cannot ignore it. You got to deal with it, my friend. You can do it. Now, last but not least, are you taking care of your mind? See, your mind, my friend, has to be bought in submission to the, the Lord. And you will know this. How do you know you're taking good care of your mind and your soul? Because, friend, you find that you are experience, experiencing joy, peace, faith, hope, love. What are these? The fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit grows when we are walking in obedience and we are waging that good fight of faith. You will see that the character of God, the Spirit of God in us begins to help us to experience our Father, which art in heaven, that we may hallow 
his name. So there you have it, my friend. Here is, uh, y'all know if y'all follow me, I'm terrible with keeping up with numbers because I didn't write this these down. I tried to keep them in my head. So I be off sometimes, all right? God bless you. Be encouraged. Keep prophesying. Speak to that thing. That's what I did, friends. It took, now I want to say this as I close. It took Joseph 13 years at least from the time God gave him the dream to the time he became second in command in Pharaoh's house. It took 20 something years for that word to come to pass that Sarah would have that child, Isaac. I, and listen, friends, she didn't think she was going to get pregnant. She thought it was a joke. In fact, she laughed at it. But didn't it come to pass? So, friends, be encouraged. Sometimes, God, I, I can say this for myself as a witness. It took 17 years from the time God gave me this prophecy where I met this amazing prophetess named Mary. She, she was from Malaysia, as I've said on the channel, as I said here. And that prophecy, friend, it has come to pass. 17 years, though, I didn't have the character. I did not have the wherewithal or the wisdom. And sometimes we get that prophecy. We think it's going to take place in a week. <laughs> you got to be broken. You got to go to visit the potter's house so he can build that character in you where you learn to get along with yourself and you are content in your relationship with God. You are content with the knowledge and the wisdom and the teaching of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Or you 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 become content in learning and seeking how to to partake of the Holy Spirit to mature you in the word of the Lord. So God bless you, my friend. Enough said. Till next time. Thank you again for all your prayers and all of the supporters of the outreach. Those that have been sending the donations for the crusade. Those that are um, right here in tow, especially the volunteers here in my city. I thank God for all of them helping to keep all and everything moving along so we can keep giving people hope with random acts of kindness and of course, my friend, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Till next time, be encouraged, my friend. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Sing a new song to the Lord. And whatever you do, don't you give up. Don't you quit. God is faithful to bring that word to pass.